The 1980s, a time of vibrant excess of Cold War anxieties. Beneath the surface, a darkness stirred. An undercurrent of fear. The satanic panic was about to erupt. America, a nation grappling with social change. The family unit seemingly under attack. The threat of Satanism offered a chilling explanation. It preyed on existing anxieties. It spread like wildfire. This wasn't just a fringe belief. It permeated every level of society. From small towns to bustling cities, fear took root. The shadows seemed to whisper of unspeakable horrors. The stage was set. A perfect storm of social anxieties, religious fervor, and media sensationalism. The satanic panic was ready to claim its victims. The airwaves crackled with fear. Talk shows became platforms for chilling tales. Stories of satanic rituals, of children, the innocent victims. The media played a crucial role, amplifying fears, blurring the lines between fact and fiction. One case stood out. The McMartin preschool trial, a California preschool accused of horrific abuse satanic rituals, tunnels beneath the playground. The case dragged on for years. No convictions were made, but the damage was done. Across the country, similar accusations surfaced. Daycare centers, churches, even heavy metal music, all became targets of suspicion. The fear was palpable. It touched every corner of American life. The satanic panic wasn't just about isolated incidents. It was a nationwide phenomenon. It revealed a dark side of human nature, a willingness to believe the unbelievable, especially when fueled by fear. The accusations grew more outlandish. Children supposedly subjected to unimaginable horrors, ritualistic abuse, animal sacrifice, all in the name of Satan. These stories often elicited through questionable therapeutic methods, recovered memories often unreliable. The concept of demonic possession gained traction. People believed evil forces were at work, influencing behavior, possessing innocent souls. Exorcisms, once relegated to horror films, now seemingly commonplace. The line between reality and nightmare blurred. Fear became a potent weapon, used to control, to manipulate. The very fabric of society seemed to unravel. The satanic panic thrived on the power of suggestion, on the vulnerability of a society grappling with unseen forces. It was a time when reason seemed to vanish, replaced by a primal fear of the unknown. Whispers of conspiracy, the government's alleged cover-up, the accusations didn't stop at individuals. They extended to the highest levels of power, whispers of government cover-ups, of secret societies pulling the strings, protecting a vast satanic network. Some believed the government was complicit, turning a blind eye to the horrors. Others went further, claiming active participation, using satanic rituals for their own nefarious purposes, these theories, often fueled by paranoia and distrust, they found fertile ground in a climate of fear. The government, once a symbol of security, now a potential perpetrator. The satanic panic eroded trust in authority. It sowed seeds of doubt. It fed a narrative of hidden agendas and sinister motives. The truth, elusive, lost in a maze of speculation and fear. Scars of suspicion, the enduring legacy of the satanic panic. As the 1990s dawned, the panic began to subside. The lack of evidence, the questionable accusations, the media frenzy waned, but the scars remained. Lives were shattered, reputations ruined, the accused forever marked, even without convictions. The stigma lingered, a chilling reminder of the power of mass hysteria. The satanic panic exposed the fragility of truth, the ease with which fear can be manipulated. It served as a cautionary tale, a reminder of the dangers of unfounded accusations. The legacy of the satanic panic is a complex one. It's a stark reminder of the dark side of human nature, of our capacity for fear and suspicion. It's a chapter in history we must never forget. Lessons from the Abyss Reflections on a Dark Chapter Looking back, the satanic panic seems like a collective fever dream, 
a descent into madness, but it holds valuable lessons about the importance of critical thinking, of due process, of resisting the allure of fear-mongering. We must learn from the mistakes of the past, to avoid repeating them, to be wary of narratives that prey on our anxieties, to demand evidence, to approach accusations with skepticism. The world is full of real dangers. We don't need to invent new ones. We need to face challenges with reason, with compassion, with a commitment to truth. The satanic panic may be behind us, but its shadow lingers, a reminder of the fragility of our social fabric. A call to be vigilant, to ensure that such a dark chapter never repeats itself. Stay curious, stay brave, stay haunted.